Hi everybody. How are you all? Today we are going to learn the activities in the second unit, the heights of harmony. So we have completed the three chapters in the unit. The first one, the poem mending wall. The second one, um, the story Amigo Brothers. And the third one, the art of truth. So all the activities that we come across after these chapters, we are going to discuss here. Some activities we had already discussed along with the chapters, right? Some other remaining activities will be discussed here. So the whole class will be based on the activities in the unit. You will have to listen carefully and do the works that I assign in between the class. You got it. Okay, let's go. Okay, um, the first chapter, as I mentioned before, uh, Mending Wall, the beautiful poem written by Robert Frost, right? So in the poem, we had discussed um, the relationship between um, two neighbors, right? The uh, importance of keeping the relationship warm and active. So the um, you all know the theme and the details of the poem, so I'm not going in detail about the poem. Now look at the activity, Paragraph Friday. Um, elaborate the idea in the following line in a paragraph, good fences make good neighbors. So uh, all these activities, some of you have already done and uh, some others didn't do this, right? As I had gone through your notebook, I found that some of the students left, skip this question to be an to answer. Okay, so this one is to be answered. It is to prepare a paragraph about good fences make good neighbors. You all know that these um, words are from the neighbor of the poet of the speaker of the poem ending wall, right? The speaker always insisted, the, the speaker always opposed the idea of constructing a wall while his neighbor insisted on constructing it because he thinks that good fences make good neighbors. And we can't deny this argument to, uh, completely because there are times when we need walls. There are times when we need fences. There are times when we need rules and regulations, right? So you have to elaborate these lines and uh, prepare a paragraph. That's the activity here. Now look at the second activity from the uh, poem, Mending Wall. It is appreciation. So you all know how to prepare an appreciation. We have discussed it so many times, right? So um, before attempting an appreciation, you have to find out these things regarding the poem, the central idea of the poem, symbolic significance of wall in the poem, Poetic devices employed by the poet, language, structure, mood, message, all those things can be discussed before, before attempting an appreciation, right? So after uh, finding out all these points, you can start preparing an appreciation. So as we said before, an appreciation, there should be an introduction, right? In introductory part, we write about the poem and the poet and uh, the th theme of the poem, right? So when you write about the Point, you can, uh, especially about this point, um, Robert, Bald, um, sorry, um, Robert Frost, you can say his poems begin in delight and end in wisdom, right? So you can begin with um, the much celebrated poem of Robert Frost, Mending Wall, discuss the, the importance of keeping the relationship active and warm, right? Then uh, 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 talk something about the poet, Robert Frost is a well-known American poet, belongs to romantic period. His poems begin in delight and end in wisdom. All right, so a few lines about the poet. Then uh, the theme of the poem, the theme of the poem is um, universal brotherhood or uh, the meaninglessness of constructing wall, things like that. Okay, uh, the theme of the poem can be discussed. Uh, then um, a paraphrase, okay, the description or the summary, short summary of the poem um, as per the mark you are allotted, right? So don't go too detailed when it is asked only for four marks. At the same time, if it is asked for essay question like eight mark or so, so go in deep, right? Okay, then um, there you can um, discuss these things. Okay, then um, next comes the poetic devices. There you can discuss about the irony used in the poem, the comic element used in the poem, right? And the poetic devices, when we come to poetic devices, uh, personification, uh, alliteration, um, metaphor, simile, all those things have been used, right? You can identify, you can find out them, and a few can be mentioned. It is 
it is important you have to pick lines from the poem to justify your um, arguments that the poet has implied um, personification metaphor simile so pick a few lines um, justifying your argument so that uh, the one who go to your paper will be impressed seeing your answer right so that's how we prepare um, appreciation okay so many of you have had written the appreciation in your notebook if those those who didn't write it still should write it before next term examination okay the other one right so this one comes in the uh, second chapter amigo brothers right amigo brothers in amigo brothers you can see a question like this uh, the box given below contains information about Antonio and Felix add more points to it so you all know about Felix and Antonio right the young Puerto Rican fighters who used to be uh, friends since their childhood they, who worked so hard to achieve their aim both of them had an aim of uh, a goal of achieving lightweight championship once in uh, in the world and they both worked so hard and um, it happened that both of them had to face each other so the all the story you all know right so um, here you have to add information about Felix and Antonio about their friendship about their workout about their fight and what happened in the end all those things can be mentioned right so in the beginning it's big it's given here felt themselves to be brothers they felt themselves to be brothers since childhood they were together unlike the other youth in the locality they had their own aim they had a positive thoughts right while the others were in the negative they had they didn't have any goal the others they didn't have any goal they just uh, idled their time at the same time these guys were uh, examples for good youth they had their passion and they used to collect um, journals and they used to call uh, they had a scrapbook where they uh, uh, collected news report regarding their fight uh, the tickets all those things they had uh, they kept their passion burning always in their mind right okay then slept ate wrapped and drummed positive right they slept uh, all the time they were together ate uh, they enjoyed rap music and they drummed all those were in positive and some other things also you can add how uh, did they uh, work how was the uh, other people's attitude towards them uh, when they felt that there is a wall rising between them how did they deal with the situation and what happened at the time of fight and uh, what happened later all those things you can uh, add here now prepare a write-up on the friendship portrait in the story so based on the points that you have collected you have to prepare a write-up so whenever you attempt a write-up don't forget to give a beautiful title a title should be given to a writer as for an article right so give a title anything any relevant title can be given and write about the um friendship uh, based on the data you collected from the book or from the chapter you got it so that's the sec uh, first activity from the chapter so if you didn't write this before write it now activity second making announcement you all know any event uh, may, uh, is uh, conducted beautifully when all, when there is announcement commentary right we go for um, commentary when we watch um, cricket or football in tv right so while live telecast if you turn off the volume you don't feel that thrilled because the commentary makes you excited throughout the game right it keeps you on horn at times Right, so commentary or announcement is a very important um, part of the successful completion of any event. So here, here too in this chapter, we have seen the announcer come up, uh, comes up with his announcement in between the match. Uh, each time they stop for the next uh, round, the announcer comes with uh, comes up with his words that keeps the all the audience are uh, excited, uh, amazed, right, and at the end of the even also we see his role right so an announcement is very important and the announcement that uh, uh, given in the chapter itself is amazing right it has all the qualities that uh, an, um, an announcement should have uh, look how does uh, the order begins it ladies and gentlemen now is the moment we have all been waiting for the main event between two fine young Puerto Rican fighters so that's how he begins we have already discussed how to prepare an announcement an announcement when you start an announcement uh, you should address the audience first to to whom you make the announcement whose attention you are intending to call right so ladies and gentlemen 
So by beginning like this, all those who are present, they will uh, uh, pay their heed, pay their attention to you, right? Now is the moment we have all been waiting for. Look at the sentence. How beautifully the author used the, sec the very second sentence. I mean, the, the beginning, the very first sentence, just after the great address, is, it should be a catchy sentence. It should be very attractive that it keeps the listeners careful, very vigilant, alert. What is going to be the next sentence? What, what was that thing that we have all been waiting? All the people were waiting for something. What was that? They should be very keen to know what, should, what is going to be the next sentence. Right. So begin like this, you, a catchy sentence. And um, then following, in following lines, you can give the details of the event in short and attractive words. And um, an announcement need not to be very elaborated one. It can be short, but should be to the point. All the points to be shared, all the information that you have to uh, share should be shared in short and beautiful words, right? That's how we have to prepare an announcement. Imagine yourself to be the announcer of the sports, sports day in your school. Write the script of the announcement that you would make for any one event, any one event. So you are yourself is an announcer for your sports meet in your school and you are making an announcement before any event. It can be 100 meter race, 100 meter relay, a 4 into 100 meter relay or a high jump, long jump or javelin throw. Any event uh, you are making the announcement, how will you begin? Right, so uh, the curiosity and the thrill of the viewers is based is uh, purely depend on your announcement because you make it before the match, before the event, right? So your announcement should keep them alert, vigilant, and curious throughout the um, event. So that's the importance of um, making announcement. Okay, the other um, activity that you come across in this chapter is um, newspaper report. Newspaper report, you know, usually it is asked for five to six marks. And um, many of you lose mark because you fail to follow the format. Actually, if you have learned a particular format to be followed while you prepare a newspaper report. Remember, if you fail to follow the format, you are sure to lose two to three marks. Because however beautiful you present the report and you fail to keep up the format, it fits you only half of the mark, right? So imagine that you are a newspaper report, reporter and you witness the contest between the Amigo brothers and note down the points which you would like to include in your report. So. Um, at first, you should have some points to be included in your newspaper report. And after collecting the data, you can start preparing. Remember the format, it should be followed. Remember what are the things to be uh, included in a newspaper report. The first thing to include in a newspaper report is the title, a catchy title, an attractive one, understood, short. So, uh, so many of you missed mark for uh, leaving the title without writing. A catchy headline is very important for a newspaper report and it has at least one mark. So if, if you don't write the title a headline and you wrote all the other parts of the news report without title in a beautiful manner, still you will lose one mark for failing to write the title. So remember, a catchy title is the first thing you have to give when you attempt a newspaper report. Then the second, second, secondly, it is said to be byline. Byline means um, written by whom, reported by whom. It can be name of a person or the reporter is like official reporter, special correspondent, anything like that. Otherwise, a name of a person can be. So title, byline. And date line. Date line means the date when the report is published. Right, date line. Then uh, begin the report you can start by writing the place write the place then begin the report and remember it is said a newspaper report is said to be um it is like 
inverted pyramid. So the first part of the news report is to be very important and it should give answer for five W's. You all know that, right? It should be, it should give answer for five W's. What are the five W's? What happened? When happened? Where happened? Where, uh, why happened? And uh, how happened? Right. Things like that can be answered in the beginning itself because all these are very important regarding the report. So in the beginning itself, all this answer for all these questions should be there in the beginning. And the coming lens can be uh, an explanation of what, what you have written in the beginning. Okay, then you can include opinion and uh, quotes from the uh, witness, someone who participated in the program, someone who attended, the, uh, watched the program, like that. So the quotes is to be included. So these things are uh, very important to be included in your newspaper report. Then only you will be able to score full mark for this. And remember, adjust the size of your report as per the mark, right? Um, if it is for six mark or so, at least one page, one complete page should be there. Understood. And regarding the title, a newspaper title used to be in simple present. Even if it is a past event, it usually it is written in simple present. Understood. For example, you are reporting the, a fight between uh, Antonio and Felix. It took, it took place yesterday, right? Then still, um, when you report the um, incident, the title can be Fight of the Amigo Brothers keeps the audience breath breathless. Kept actually, right? Because it, it's past even, it took place yesterday, still keeps, keeps the audience breathless. Right, so that's how it is usually written. You can go through the newspaper if you have with you and you will find it is written in simple present. Okay, so these things can be included in the report. These are only regarding the report here but what I told is about all the newspaper report, whenever you try, these things should be there. Otherwise, you will lose mark for not following the format. So venue should be there. What is the venue? Tom's King's Square Park. Time, contestant, park begins to fill up even earlier. Fighters enter, crowd explode with a roar. Um, fight begins. Uh, the fight is a fierce one. Uh, it is inch to inch fight. Nobody leaves an inch. And uh, towards the end, the um, audience get uh, surprised to see the fight. They were alarmed, thinking that it is going to be a death fight. And they, uh, to all that surprise, the fight comes to an end by the hugging of the Amigo brothers. So uh, things like that can be included. Now prepare the newspaper report. So this newspaper report it is to be prepared by everyone following the format that I had explained before and that what I explained now. Okay, students, this is from your textbook, Activity Fourth Debate. Actually, if you were present here, if you were in a normal classroom, we, can, we could have conducted a debate, um, but for now, we can't. But anyhow, you have to understand what are the things you have to um, understand regarding the debate and how will you um, how will you be um, asked to answer questions for, uh, for your examination from this part? All right. So here, look at the question. The announcer turned to the point to the winner and found himself alone. Arm in arm, the champions had already left the ring. The winner in the boxing competition left without receiving, any, receiving the prize. This is against the rules and regulations of a game. Do you agree to this opinion? If you agree, why if you write down your points below so um as we all know the amigo brothers we thought before the announcer comes up with this um, announcement regarding the end result of the fight both of them had left the ring right so do you agree that uh, their action was the right thing did they do the right thing or not so do you agree um this is against the rules and regulations of a game do you agree to this opinion if you agree why so, yes, if you agree, it, actually this is absolutely against the rules and regulations of a game. If you saw why it is, you have to write, right? For any game, there is particular rules and etiquettes, right? 
uh, uh, you know, uh, regulations to be followed. So as a, a sportsman, it, it is their uh, duty. It is, it is um, the morality of the moral morality of a sportsman to be abide by the rule and regulation of the game or the tournament. So the things like that you can add, right? If you disagree, write down the reasons. So if you don't agree with the um, statement here, this is against the rules and regulation. Uh, yes, um, they fought, both of them fought um, following the rules of the game without exceeding any limit, but both of them played and they didn't want to listen, they didn't want to know the end result because both of them consider each other to be the winner because they both fought very well. So you come up with your arguments against. Okay, so how do they ask you in examinations? They'll be giving you one statement and they'll ask you prepare four arguments against the statement or write four arguments in favor of the statement or for the statement. Understood? So that, that's how it is asked for examination. For example, um, once it was asked that a physical education should be implemented in higher secondary level two is the statement. Do you agree? Otherwise, bring a four arguments in favor of the statement. Bring four arguments justifying the statement, for example. The other something, the opposite will be asked. Um, physical education should be implemented in um, higher secondary section two. Prepare four arguments against this statement. So you should be able to think um, opposite and in favor of the given topic, right? So. Um, Think of four arguments to be filled here and for here. Understood? And um, if you prepare things like this, it, it will reduce your time for thinking there in the examination hall because uh, stuff that you had already thought must be there in your mind. It will uh, um, help you from time consuming, right? Okay. The other uh, activity from this unit is Book review, book review uh, in connection with the reading week observation, you were asked to prepare reviews, right? Based on two stories actually, one Malayalam story and one English story, I think, right? The Malayalam story, I think, uh, Bhumi Udavagashigal by Waikam Muhammad Bashir, right? And the English story was um, Homecoming by Rabindranath Tagore. I think you remember. Some of you had already prepared the um, review, right? So. Uh, here in your textbook itself, a review has been given. The read the book review given below and identify its major features. So a book review has been given here. It's there in your textbook. Read it carefully. And later, you may be asked to prepare a review of any of the stories. Sometimes you may be asked to prepare a review of the story matchbox, Horigalo, or Amigo Brothers. So what are the things you have to include in a review? Right. You should by reading this, you should understand what are the things. What might it be? Can you imagine? Can you guess what are the things? Yes, um, you can write about the author, about the story, I mean the short, what, uh, what is the short content of the book or the story, right, the theme, and about the characters and um, the development of the characters and uh, the message, and the language, right, and the relevance, how far it is useful in present days, that's relevance, right? So all those things can be included in a review. Okay, so read this one and fill the box that follows. Now list the features of the review. So reading the review, you can come to a conclusion, this and these things can be included in a review. So author and um, uh, era, era, time, which time was mentioned, the any cultural, cultural value is there and um, characters, and the message, uh, your impression about the book, how did you feel reading the book, about its language, about the content, and uh, the importance of the content, all those things can be right there in a review. Okay. The other one, homonyms, we had already discussed, so I'm not going deep in to discuss this one. Homonyms are, you know, um, words. Homonyms are multiple meaning words, or words that share 
same spelling and the same pronunciation but have different meaning same word with same spelling and same pronunciation but in different context it has it has different meaning here it is the word trunk has been given trunk you all know so many meanings already right uh, it can be said to for a clothes uh, uh, that boys wear while they play and it can be a, uh, the major part of a tree it can be a box made of tin right and it can be the uh, it's said to be for the dicky of a, a car so same word with same spelling and same pronunciation and has different meaning as per the context right so some uh, other words have been given light you all know lightweight right what does it mean light then in that context light has another meaning right and light um, brightness i, I mean uh, uh, that is also can be right duck uh, in um, in some context it can be used as a verb in some context the same spelling same um, or pronunciation as noun uh, a bird right so all this can be found you all know uh, it's um measurement of weight right one uh, 133 pound 134 pound and it can be pound that means uh hit for, for hitting it also it can be said and uh, it can be currency too right okay so all this can be um have a uh, same spelling with same pronunciation has different meanings that's those are called homonyms okay uh, these are vocabulary related to sports. Okay, now let's come to the activities in the chapter, the hour of truth. You all know that. This is activity one in the chapter, uh, the hour of truth. Here you can see that it is analysis. It is uh, pick out the striking dialogues in the play as the samples given below and try to deliver them in front of the whole class. Now write out the implied meaning of the dialogues in the column. So you can't present it there in front of the class as we are having online class now, but you can do the second one, write on the implied meaning of the dialogues in the column. So here you can write the uh, dialogues picked up from the chapter and who is the speaker and what does he mean or what does she mean. Here you can see, your father will do his duty, John, no matter what comes of it. So it's words by Martha, right? And what does she mean? She says that her husband, Baldwin, is an upright man. So by saying this, she means her husband. And John's father is an upright man. People have been saying things. John says this word. He means the unpleasant news about Baldwin's suspected role in the misappropriation of money. So by saying this, John means, Father, you are under you are under cloud too. People started to speak unnecessary things, unfavorable things about you. So it's better for you to open up your mouth and say what you have to to the press. Understood. So by saying this, he means this. And uh, pick out some other examples from the chapter. Like uh, we said, I lived, so far I lived uh, as, an, as a honest, honest man, and I'll go to my grave clean, right? I will live the rest of my life uh, clean, and I'll go to my grave clean, uh, as the dialogue by Baldwin, right? So what does he mean? He says, uh, he says that he will never commit crime he will never tell lie to save his friend and he doesn't want to live a life of a liar so far he lived a life of a truthful man and the rest of the life also will be the same way and he will never try to save Gresham in the court by telling I don't remember that's what he means right so pick out uh, dialogues like this and write them here and who told this and uh, pick, uh, write down what do they mean by doing so, you, it, it will help you for examination also, for, because for examination, they ask you questions based on the dialogues, right? So the striking dialogues can be written here. Okay. The second, this one is to prepare the write-up. Write-up, I told you, when you prepare a write-up, don't forget to give a title. So it is about the beginning and ending of the uh, one-act play. In the beginning, we have seen uh, the weather is mentioned and the... Uh, settings where do people stand and what are they talking and what is the role of the weather it is uh, sunny or hot it is hot and uh, it is about to rain things like that right and uh, what is the uh, how is the end of the play we can see marshall comes to the uh, to baldwin's house and he is offered a better job before his truthfulness so um it is uh, really a great thing right so 
in the beginning it, there is some confusion and still in distant uh, future there is a ray of hope that's what we see in the beginning and in the end we can see that the good man the good man has been rewarded what he deserved and the bad uh, the one who committed crime one who uh, committed misappropriation with the uh, depositors fund has been jailed so it's it has a great positive ending okay then character sketch you have already prepared i think right uh, character sketch of uh, balding character sketch of john balding and um, martha all these are important okay and uh, the other question you can expect based on this uh, one act play is um, actually it may not be group this it can be this group discussion sometime it can be a write-up Sometimes you may be asked to deliver a speech about the role of um, corruption in uh, pulling back the back a nation, right? Here, what according to you are the reasons for the corruption? What are the reasons for corruption? And what are the evil effects of corruption? How can we discourage corruption? So this one is to be written. Everybody should write. Oh, what according to you? What uh, uh, in your view? What are the reasons for corruption? Why do people do corruption? Right. And what are the evil effects of corruption and who is um, um, exploited through corruption? Who is get affected by the corruption? And how can we discourage corruption? How can we fight against corruption? How can we reduce corruption? Right, and these are points to be filled in, uh, right? The following is the topic for a group discussion. Corruption curtails the development of a country. Uh, corruption makes the uh, uh, country's corrupt, uh, development slow. Cocktails means it's, it blocks actually, right? Corruption blocks uh, here in the, uh, in Kerala itself, we can see a lot of examples for uh, corruption. How did corruption block the um, development of the country, right? In, in whole India, not only in Kerala, in whole India, actually corruption is an international thing, not only in India, it, it's everywhere, right? So the corruption blocks, hinders development of a country. So what are the points you can contribute? Uh, what are the points you can uh, include here? And based on the, those points, you can prepare a write-up. Actually, uh, for exam, examination, you may be asked to prepare write-up or sometimes uh, make a speech regarding the evil effect of a corruption, understood, bribery. Okay, all those things you may be asked. Activity five, comparing. Comparing means think, uh, it is same as announcement, right? So here you are asked to prepare an announcement like think that you are selected to introduce the actors of the play, the hour of truth to the audience, prepare a script. So just like an announcement, you have to prepare the script introducing the characters, uh, the, act, the actors of, of the play of the, uh, the hour of truth. Okay, so you introduce who act, which role and prepare the announcement. Okay, here. The Reader's Theatre is a vocal rendering of the script of play. There are no stage setting costumes or actions involved in it. Instead, the script of the play is read out with proper voice modulation. Reader's Theatre is used in a language classroom to improve listening and reading skills. So it is uh, unlike um, enacting the play, it is just reading without acting. It is just reading the play with um, the proper voice modulation. Uh, rising and falling of the tone with good pronunciation, right? So that's re reader's theater. We are not going to do those things now. Activities, now here comes the tense. Grammar part, right? You have already known uh, which are the tense, um, how many tenses are there, uh, what to use where, all those things you already know. So these are just to remind you, refresh your thoughts. Okay, uh, read the sentences from the story Amigo Brothers. Large posters plastered all over the wall of local shops announced the fight between Antonio Cruz and Felix Vargas as the main part. The fight had created great interest in the neighborhood. Antonio and Felix were well liked and respected. Each had his own loyal following. The words in italics are the, in the past tense from past tense form and they refer to the past events. So you have seen plastered and announced had created and uh, where had all these are in past tense form and they refer to past events because it took place before happened before right so you have studied different tense forms of verbs and their applications in this section you are given more situation for reinforcement it is uh, not just to teach you because you already know all those things 
uh, the tense, uh, past tense, present tense, future tense, all these things, you know, here you just to reinforce, just to strengthen your knowledge, uh, it is included here. So a few um, works have been given here, filling the blanks, choosing the right option from the bracket, bracket. So here, uh, after each space, two options are there, you have to find out the correct one and fill in the blanks. Thomas Edison dash work on the railway station when he was 12. So starting or started when he was 12 means it is it must be any um, event took place right he, he's uh, uh, he's no more actually so his 12th age is of course it is past so Thomas Edison started work on the railways railway right started it is okay there were long periods with nothing for him to do so he built or building himself a little laboratory in the luggage in the luggage van where he could carry out experiment so of course it is built so that's how after reading each one find out which is more suitable to the space and write out it is to be done you can do this in your textbook itself and show me okay And the second one in the same question, fill in the blanks using the correct tense form of the verb given in brackets. So here some verbs have been given in brackets, be, join, publish, write. So as per the situation, you have to make changes in tense. For example, Sekar now with Senado, a government publication. So be verb, it is uh, uh, here we have to use the different forms of be. What can be used here? Sekar is now with senado right the, the forms of be verb you know i think right is was right am um, okay so here sager is now as there is now you all know that it is present right where there is now you can understand it is present tense right so the present form of be is is so sager is now with senado a government publication he joined it a year ago a year ago from this one we can understand it is and even took place before a year past. So, what must be the past form of join? Joined. He joined it a year ago. Since then, he articles on various subjects. So, here you can see since. So, wherever you see since for, you have to understand here the verb form is present perfect continuous. Right. So, since then, he has been publishing articles. He has been publishing articles on various subjects. So as there is since, if it is for F O R, uh, for four years, for five years, he has been publishing articles like that. You can write. Okay, he uh, one importance of being honest in public. Next week, we can see here the um, sentence starts with next week. So it's going to be in future, right? So how will you write the future form of write? Will write. Understood. Next week he'll write on the importance of being honest in public life. That's how you have to fill this. The same way, this one also you can fill. Uh, reading the sentence, you can understand to which time it belongs to, right? To which time it belongs to, for example, past, present, future. So after reading the sentence, you'll get an idea. And based on the idea, you have to make changes in the verb. So if it is past, you can write, I reached. If it is future, I will reach. Understood? OK. Now, that's about tense. You have to fill, you have to do all the uh, activities of tense here. In your textbook, it can be read and take photo and send to me. Next one is reported speech. We have been learning this one from, from our earlier classes. Right, so reported speech, um, you all know we have, uh, we have done this in plus one also. When we use reported speech, the main verb of the sentence is usually in the past form. The rest of the sentence is also in the past form. So a uh, present form will be con uh, converted into past. Right, uh, present will be uh, converted to past. In general, the present form in the direct speech changed to the past form in reported speech. Am, is, or was, am, is, or the present form will be converted to was, where. Do, does will be converted to did. Will will be converted to would. Can to could. Have, has will be converted to had. Want, like, no, go. All these are present form of the verb, so will be converted to the past form like wanted, liked, knew, went. Understood? So in reported speech, the present, send, present tense will be converted to past. 
Okay, if it is already in past, it will be converted to past perfect. You all know that, right? If it is already, it is did here, we have to convert had done. If it is asked here, had asked. Understood? So if it is already passed, then past perfect. Okay. So some examples have been given here in your textbook. Um, you can go through. These are some examples, some practice. Uh, read it carefully. And um, here, one practice question have been given. You have to convert this into reported speech. Understood? Okay. And a few more um, words are there related to reported speech. Read it carefully and fill it. And uh, some more things here. Understood? Um, this one. Take the first turning to the left. So he asked me to take, to take the first turning. Understood? Like this. This one can be done. To take the first turning to the left. To keep straight on till he reached the main road. Understood? That's all. Next one, the passive voice. You all know how to prepare the passive voice. We have known. I'll be sharing the notes regarding the active voice, passive voice, reported speech. And you must go through the notes. Understood? Then prepare. So in passive voice, usually we begin with the object, then the, um, um, art, the, then the auxiliary verb, then the V3 v form, the past participle form of the verb, then by the agent. That's how we write. And the notes I'll be sharing, you have to go through this and fill the blank. That's all the activities in this unit. Um, so do all the activities. There is no other chapter for now. In this course, it is only all about activities in this unit so you should um, do all the activities uh, in your either in your textbook or in your notebook take photo and send to me understood that's all about today's class thank you for watching have a great day